You know, sometimes in church, we don't know whether to just say amen or applaud. Let's give them a round of applause for that. Thank you, choir. I'd invite everyone to stand, if it's comfortable for you to do so, as we sing all glory, loud, and honor. And this is a time to wave your palm branches. It's still Palm Sunday for about three more minutes. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless joy for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will 
end in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9a, a reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Psalm is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16, which we will read responsively. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. The second reading is from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11, a reading from Philippians. But the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. We actually have a children's sermon right now. It's not in the bulletin, so. Turned it off the wrong way. All right, I'd like to invite the kids to come up, and you can bring your palms with you if you'd like. And I, I apologize. Y'all are going to learn my, one of my big weaknesses. I'm allergic to palms, so I'm going to be sniffling through the rest of today's service. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. All right. That was pretty cool this morning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit windy. I was kind of wishing I had you know, put my hair up, but it was good. All right, so. I think this morning's activity is going to make it a little easier, but I'd like us to pretend that we're going to go back in time to the very first Palm Sunday. All right, so we've heard that the Messiah is coming, and we've heard of all the great miracles 
that he's performed. And your best friend might have even witnessed one. Centuries of prophecy are coming to pass right in front of your eyes. The king who is to deliver your people from domination and redeem Israel has finally arrived. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, we're, just, we're getting excited. The time has come, and this Messiah is now riding into your town, right here in the story city, on a donkey. Do you think, do you think we, a person could ride on a donkey? On, on, no? Well, I think, I think I heard them say this was a mini donkey. And so donkeys can be much bigger, too. I, I don't know a lot about donkeys, but I don't know. Pastor Tim, do you know how big donkeys can get? He said there's some that are called mammoth donkeys, and so that was almost as big as a horse, I guess. Well, I, I, think, I think a person could ride one of those for sure. And so we're going to take our palms, and we're going to run into our backyard, and we're going to tear off some of our branches because... These are what kind of trees grow in Israel as you get palm branches. And these are signs of victory and triumph. And we give one to everyone we see, which most, most people have one here today. And we're all going to run out to the road to meet him. And this is really exciting. So we're going to be waving our, our palm branches. It's a lot of excitement. And when we get there, we also we find a huge crowd of people who also have palm branches, and they're waving and cheering, and it's like a big parade. You guys ever been to a parade? You have? Cool. Yeah, parades are pretty exciting. One came to your house? Wow. I wish I had a parade come to my house. And so we, we're cheering this Messiah. It's a big parade, and we notice the ground's kind of dusty, and we don't, want the, we don't want our Messiah to get all covered in dust, do we? No. So, so people start taking off their cloaks and they, or their jackets, their coats. Um, I might take off my alb, and we'll spread it out on the ground so that, way they, so that way he can walk on that instead of the dusty ground. Does that sound good? Yeah. And then suddenly, a song comes out of the crowd. Hosanna, blessed is the, he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we can wave our branches again here. And you start singing along too. And as we guide this Messiah all the way through town and waving our branches, kind of like how we walked around the church this morning, if, if you guys walked around the church with us. And we are waving our palm branches and we're proclaiming him as our king. And that's what Palm Sunday is. It's a big parade. And it's an adventure, it's pretty exciting, and it's a real event in history. And so we know that this king's kingdom was not really one of this world, right? That God's kingdom is everywhere and not in one particular place. And we're, getting, we're cheering for him because we're ready for his biggest event of all. Do we know what's coming up? Easter, yeah, and we're going to hear, and in just a few minutes, we're going to hear about, well, we're going to hear the start of this story, and, and it's going to be victory over death itself. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, all right, so will you all pray with me? Heavenly Father, help us to worship and adore you, not only when the crowds do and things are going well, but also in the dark times of our lives. Help us to show others the way towards Jesus by behaving in ways that are pleasing to you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so as you guys go back to your seats, I want you to cheer really loudly and wave your palms up in the air, okay? <laughs> Just a couple more moments of instructions before we have the gospel acclamation. You're going to remain seated during the gospel acclamation. And you'll remain seated during the first part of the Passion Reading. I, I, this church has done both things in the past. Sometimes they only celebrate Palm Sunday, but this officially is Palm slash Passion Sunday. So we celebrate Easter every Sunday of the year. It's going to be a special celebration a week from today. But it's important that we meditate on and worship also the Passion of our Lord Jesus which we'll do also on Thursday and Friday, but those readings will come from the Gospel of John.
Today we'll be reading the Passion account from the Gospel of Luke, which we'll also hear from Luke on Easter Sunday. Now, the other instruction is you have a part to play in this. When you read along on the slides, when you get to the words in yellow, that's for all of you to say in unison together. So you'll have a part. It, it kicks in about a third of the way through, and then uh, you have quite a bit to read as we go along. So again, remain seated at the beginning. You'll be instructed to stand as we get closer to the end. So now we'll sing the gospel acclamation. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, Jesus said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out for you, this, that is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it, is, as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the, as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, no, no not, not a thing. thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, the scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless, and indeed what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, Lord look, look here, here are two swords. swords. He replied, it is enough. He came and went, out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then Jesus withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he 
prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And Jesus said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with the kiss you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the high priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I was a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. And they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This This man man also also was was with with him. him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, Woman, I do do not not know him. him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later still, another kept insisting, Truly this man was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him. They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Who then the Son of Man? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, He asked whether the man was a Galilean, and when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned Jesus at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Pilate 
and Herod became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts, that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Please stand if comfortable. As they led him away, they seized a man Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, They crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He He saved saved others. others. Let Let him him save himself if he's the Messiah Messiah of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for you are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, 
Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who though a member of the consul, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. That passion narrative is meant to be the proclamation this morning, so I'll just give you a couple of things to ponder. First of all, did some things take you by surprise? It's a story that we've heard so many times. All four Gospels have the passion story. Each is somewhat unique. Each has its gifts. But each are probably pretty familiar to you. I think one of the things that's kind of surprising about this is that wherever Jesus goes, peace and reconciliation breaks out. And the unexpected happens. They go to strike people with a sword. A slave loses an ear. Jesus says, no more of that. And heals the ear. It may seem like a superfluous detail, but even Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies, end up friends. Peter denies three times that he even knows Jesus. Stay tuned. There's a reconciliation that'll happen as we go forward towards Easter. Pilate announces Jesus innocent three times. Unexpected. But more than anything, if there was just one kernel that I want you to take with you and hang on to for the rest of your lives, is this. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that God would forgive us. That's a medieval understanding of atonement that has carried too much weight even into modern times. That's not what's going on here. Jesus dies on the cross proving that God has already forgiven us. Jesus dies on the cross to embrace all of human and suffering. There is, in the incarnation, in God becoming human in Christ Jesus, there is no part of human life that God has not experienced and now redeemed, including the fear of death and death itself. We'll hear the rest of the story on Easter. If it's comfortable to stand, I invite you to do so now as we sing, Were You There? Hymn number 353.
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you to shine Were you there when the sun refused to shine Oh Sometimes it causes me to tremble tremble Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he survived under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace with one another. And you may be seated. Um, just I, again, I want to thank everyone for their continued support of the mission that we have in, in service to Jesus Christ here through St. Petrie. Um, we have offering plates in the front as well as the back of the church. Um, and you can drop things off in our mailbox or mail it into us or electronically as well. Again, thank you. And you may remain seated until we get to the uh, benediction at the end. We'll now sing our offertory prayer. Be from the Lord, fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table. taste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants created in love. Train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation, that we take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion. Supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation. Accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill. We pray especially for Judy, Tim, Howard, Helen, Paul, Mark, Karen, Darlene, Marilyn, Linda, Kay, John, and for all those we name in our hearts, either silently or out loud. Grant them your mercy and healing. Merciful God, Receive our prayers. For Christians around the world, preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all those impacted by the violence in Ukraine, Protect all those fleeing, all those who are making their ways to safety, all those that are assisting those, those uh, refugees and displaced persons. Stir us to action. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember those who have died, who were commended into your hands. Remember us when we come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. We also pray a blessing on those celebrating the anniversary of their baptisms this week. Barbara, Nancy, Colby, Callan, Jonathan, 
Gabriella, Madeline, Jill, Kevin, Shane, Paul, and Dylan. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have just a few announcements this morning. Um, besides the creative corner, on that table back there too, we have, and hopefully we'll do this now for, uh, from here on out, we'll have some children's bulletins. And there's two different bulletins, uh, pre-reader and reader. So kids that can read, there's one for them. Pre-readers have more activities on it. So uh, look for those on that table back there on any Sunday. Uh, today is Palm Sunday. There is also an open house at Bethany Life from one, starting at 1 for Helen Zook, 101st birthday. So maybe you can get by and see her or stop by and say hi. Um, the Welka Bible Study, Thursday the 14th at 2. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services are at Bergen at 7. I'll be preaching as the tradition of us taking turns hosting and preaching. Good Friday will be at 7 as well at Bergen. The, our uh, confirmation students are doing parts of both those services. The Vigil of Easter, there's uh, traditionally 12 Old Testament readings that are part of that service. A full-blown Easter, uh, Easter Vigil service would start normally at midnight and last until about 3 or 4 in the morning. We have a different take on that. And so uh, on Facebook, you can hear our confirmation students reading those different passages. And those are like 12 or 13 different videos that will be posted, Megan. Megan's working with our confirmation kids on that. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you check it out too. St. Petrie's Easter Festival service will be a week from today at 9.30. Uh, we're delivering meals in May. Please sign up. Help us out with that. Saturday mornings, uh, Welka, the 16th at 9 a.m. The book club is on the 23rd. Washington Black is the book. We still need some folks to be voting members for our Senate Assembly coming up. Quarterly giving statements are in the narthex. Please pick yours up. Save us some postage. Loaves and fishes, uh, we'll staff that on the 30th from 10 to noon. Please contact Larry or John. If you want to help out with the banner for Emma, contact Angie or Peg. There is a fundraiser for, I think it's for their development committee. Anyway, the households of Bethany are doing a Palm Sunday brunch. Bold, the details in their bulletin. There's a men's retreat coming up at Riverside. YouTube channel, and before that, I know Betty's got some exciting news for us. Um, several years ago, uh, we had an adult Sunday school class here about refugees. And um, at that time, when we finished the class, we did some brainstorming to try to figure out if there was something we could do to help refugees. And we checked with a few agencies, and we just really didn't come up with anything. Well, now we do have opportunity. Um, in the Des Moines Register on, I think it, was, it started on Monday, I believe, there have been a series of articles all week about the Afghan refugees in Des Moines who are feeling very neglected. Um, many of them are living in extended stay hotels because they can't find rental property that's affordable. Um, some of them are running out of food. Their kids aren't in school because they're in these hotels. And it just sounds awful. Um, 
there are about five agencies that are working with folks, and um, part of their challenge is um, during the previous administration, um, they pretty much cut off um, refugees from even coming, coming to the United States. So a lot of these agencies laid people off, so they didn't have much staff. And now, now all of a sudden, Des Moines got something like three or 400 refugees to take care of from Afghanistan. And um, so the paper had, um, so they're working on increasing their staff and helping these folks, but um, it's been kind of a rough process since February. Um, so the newspaper had a list of these agencies and several ways that people could help. And um, some of that is donating furniture or other household items, um, providing transportation. Um, you know, if you had a house in Des Moines that you could rent reasonably, that would be a good thing too. Um, so anyway, um, I copied off some of the information here. And if you get the Des Moines Sunday paper, there's kind of an expanded list on this in the Metro and Iowa section today um, that has lists of these agencies and things that they're looking for. Um, a couple of them have lists on Amazon that you can um, go on their shopping list and buy anything you want. Um, others have lists of items that you can donate in places that it can be delivered. Um, there's a kind of a free garage sale happening next Saturday. Uh, or, I don't know, in a week or two, but you have to take the stuff down there Saturday morning. So anyway, I did make copies. I've got some to hand out. Um, Lutheran Services in Iowa on their refugee website um, or their resettlement website, um, they have lists of, they call them welcome boxes. It's kind of like the Lutheran World Relief health kits and school kits and stuff like that. It's lists of various categories. Um, so that would be something we could look into too. So I'll have copies of these if you're interested and if you want to talk about a, you know, an organized effort to help, I'll be down at coffee. Thank you so much, Betty. That would be great. Go find her at coffee time. Please stand if it's comfortable. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. We now sing on a hill far away. The tune should be familiar and the words will be on the screen. Exchange 
catch it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, Jesus suffered and disciples of Jesus Christ, called to grow in Christ and to invite all to follow him. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.